king of science. Oh, 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 and around everywhere else, and then I come back here and I'm like, oh, you guys again. <laughs> I feel like I'm at home. It's awesome. Where Toronto. Tomorrow. Is home. Where Toronto is not my home. The dream. <laughs> uh, if anyone has a sublet that they'd like to give us ever to come for a couple months, I would love that. Because um, I love you guys. Here's a true story. He was ready for a true story. All the rest of it was shit. <laughs> You guys realize I'm mostly just reading like one and two minute poems, right? Is this like clear? I know it feels really fast and kind of awkward, um, but I'm going to read you a, a little, very long story in a moment, so it's okay. In the aquarium, I'm explaining to a small group of small children that the narwhal tusk in the glass case is actually a unicorn horn. That once they swam under the sea, that sometimes you can still see them swimming upstream, spawning. They're a tiny few. The museums and galleries have never dedicated their high ceilings and air control to. The children stand wide-eyed like aurochs. And they don't see him, but he sees me. Father lurks, pacing like the Tasmanian devil says, let's go, children! <laughs> They say, but Daddy, didn't you see the unicorn horn? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter that he doesn't believe. It matters that they do. Desperate to preserve a species they have never even seen. Yeah.